I'm Rachel, owner and artist here at Stella Rose Boutique. I'm located inside Stella Rose Mercantile right here in Greenville, Tennessee. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button for me. And if you're not, welcome back friends and family. Today I'm participating in a collaboration called Third Thursday Thrift Flips. It's hosted by Miss Tammy from the Rusted Willow. Her contact information will be in my description box below. Make sure you hit hashtag Third Thursday Thrift Flips and you will find all of the amazing creators that are participating in this month's collaboration. I have some exciting news for you and I can't wait to share it with you. I'll do that later on in the video. Right now, let's get started with the thrift flips that I have for you. Let's go! Here is Tammy from the Rusted Willow. Her information and the playlist will be in the description box below. Project number one. I'm using Fusion's TSP Alternative Cleaner. I use it for everything. It is amazing stuff. This is a vintage replica print that we've had in my shop for quite some time and it just hasn't sold. So now it's time to give it a makeover. I gave it a coat of Picket Fence from Fusion. This is an all-in-one paint. It does have a top coat already built into it. I decided I was going to use the Red Rooster decoupage paper from Recycled. I laid it down and then I put my finger into the corner so I'd have a rough area of where to cut and then I used a razor blade to cut it all the way around so it fit perfectly. Then I took out my DIY crystal clear patina. It's a decoupage medium and I put down my first layer. Before I lay down decoupage paper, I give it a light misting of water. And this is because it gives the paper a little bit more play when you're laying it down. It is a little more flimsy because it's damp, but you have a lot more workability with the paper. Once the paper is down, on the actual decoupage medium, I then use saran wrap to smooth out all of the paper and then I pull it back and then I add decoupage medium again to another little section and then I lay the paper back down and then I went uh, over the top of it again with the saran wrap. I do this until I get to the very end and all of the paper has been laid down. Now I'm going to dry brush this piece. My absolute number one brush to use for dry brushing is my Short 50 from Klingon. And I love using the Cottage Colors collection all-in-one paint to dry brush with from DIY. I am using the white linen color and you see me dipping it in the can dabbing off all the excess before I dry brush. I did both the frame and some of the actual decoupage paper this time. Once everything was completely dried, um, I made sure that there were no bubbles in the paper. If there are any bubbles when I decoupage, I take a syringe and draw back some of our decoupage medium and I make a little hole and I inject the medium into the hole and as I withdraw the needle, I pull back down on the paper so it'll lay back flat again. That didn't happen in this instance, but I wanted to share with you what I do when that does, what I do do when that does happen. I am now sealing this paper up with the DIY's Big Top, which is my go-to to seal all of my decoupage papers. Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever had something that you thrifted, it didn't sell and you took it down and redid it. I'd love to know what you did. And if you're enjoying this, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps my channel out. All of these products that I've used in this flip here are available on my website at stellarosemercantile.co. We are on to project number two. I have a tray that I got for $3 at a garage sale and we're gonna make this over. I'm using my Dainty Flourishes mold from Iron Orchid Designs and I dusted it with a little bit of cornstarch and then I took some air dry clay from IOD and I rolled it out long like a little snake because this is a longer piece. And then you see me here pushing the clay out the top using our really easy micro rim edge. It makes it super easy. Then I just flipped the mold over and peeled out the design. 
And then I got out my Type Bond Quick and Thick. I, this is my go-to glue for adhering molds down. I absolutely love it. And then I added in the center of each side the little scroll pattern that I had made with the molds. After I had my molds just where I wanted them, I used one of my little artisan brushes from the turquoise iris and I was making sure I had all the DIY white swan paint that I was using into the little nooks and crannies of the molds. If you paint your molds before they dry, they tend not to crack. If you do wait and they do crack, it's not a big deal. You can just take some more clay and put the wet clay into the cracked areas and nobody will know. I painted the entire tray with white swan and then when I was done and it was dried, I sealed it up with DIY's Big Top. You see me here measuring the tray? I need to know where the center is. I don't have my tape measure out all the way, but that's because I automatically know a tape measure is three inches. So once I found my center, and then I found the center of my sheep, I'm able to lay them down and play with the design on how I want it to lay out. I am using IOD stamps. This is from the Farm Animal stamp and from the Queen Bee stamp. I took out my IOD black ink and I stamped up the sheep and I laid him down in the center. Once I was done with my little lamb, I stamped the greenery from the queen bee stamp and the medallion and dried it up quickly with my heat gun because I wanted to apply DIY's old and gray patina. This has a natural top coat in it, so it doesn't need to be uh, sealed. And this just sits into the nooks and crannies and gives things a more aged look. I did the entire piece with the old and gray and I wiped it back. It needed something more, so I took my black ink pad from IOD and I dabbed the edges all the way around and the corners and a little bit on the top. At the end picture here, you're gonna see where I had taken jute twine. I did it with uh, a hot glue gun and I wrapped the handles. I can't find the footage on that. I'm really sorry, but this is how it turned out and I absolutely love it. Tell me in the comments what you guys all think. On to project number three. This is a very heavy candlestick really highly detailed that I got at a garage sale and I'm painting it with DIY's Prairie Gray. You guys have seen me paint a lot of times so I didn't record the whole thing. Then I'm using DIY's clear wax and I cover the entire piece with the clear wax before I go in and stipple into the nooks and crannies all of the white wax. Now while I was recording this, so much of my arm and my shoulder was in the way so you couldn't see what I was doing. Now right here I am wiping back the white wax so that you can see it sitting in all the good nooks and crannies and the details of this candlestick. I always clear wax before I use a colored wax it's a security blanket for me because if you mess up and put up too much white wax or too much dark wax, then you can use the clear wax as an eraser to take some of it back off again. I'm using the DIY Golden Rule and I'm highlighting just the little tips and edges all the way around this candlestick. I absolutely love the way this turned out. Have you guys ever done any candlesticks like this? Let me know in the comments. And if you like what you're seeing, please hit that subscribe button. Project number four. I'm using my TSP Alternative Cleaner from Fusion. As I tell you all the time, I love this stuff. I am cleaning this adorable little hen and her chicks that I picked up at a garage sale for a buck. And I'm putting some DIY Prairie Gray paint in a cup and I'm adding salt wash to it. So I'm gonna add some texture to the hen. You'll see here, I'm gonna freeze it so you can see about how thick, there you go, that I make the salt wash mixture. Before adding the texture medium to her, I decided I wanted to give her a complete coat 
of Prairie Gray from DIY and then I wanted to dry it. I didn't have my heat gun here at the house. It was up at the shop. So I just used my hair dryer. That worked just fine. Once that was all good and dry, I started stippling at the bottom with my JRV stencil brushes. I used the 3 8 and then I went to a half inch and then the one inch. I have a set of stenciling brushes for both stenciling and waxing. They're perfect to get in the nooks and crannies when you're trying to wax little tiny areas. Once she was completely dry, I waxed her with clear wax first and then I went over her with the DIY white wax. With the white wax, I did it in sections and I wiped it back so it didn't set in there too much. This has a very fine texture that I added to this adorable hen and her chicks. All of the paint and products used in today's thrift flips you can find on my website at stellarosemercantile.co or in my shop at 524 Justice Drive in Greenville, Tennessee. I have two super exciting announcements. The first one, I have been approved to sell over on the WhatNot platform. If you download the app and look up Stella Rose Boutique, Hit follow and come see what I've got, guys. And my second announcement is we now have the Surf Prep sanding system in-house and I have some amazing furniture flips coming up. So make sure you hit subscribe so you won't miss any of those videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!